local capture and common agency, I think will be presented by the uh, yeah, Mr. Lituan Rusli of the Technik House School Cologne. And the last uh, presentations will be uh, the elements of maritime logistics transaction costs in islands province of North uh, Maluku, eastern part of Indonesia, and will be presented by, um, I think, uh, Mr. Kairula Amin. Okay, that is the uh, three papers and three uh, presenters that will uh, be the main um, uh, agenda of this uh, sessions. Okay, so for the other participants, I think um, we all know the, the rules uh, of the games in using a Zoom. So please uh, let us follow the rules such that we can uh, go uh, smoothly uh, during the sessions. Okay, for the presenters, I think we, you have uh, 30 minutes uh, at all. I, um, but but uh, I prefer to divide your times by presenting in uh, 15 or 20 minutes, all the presentations. And then after the last presenters that we we will uh, have the it's like a 30 minutes for uh, q a for discussions okay so if you have any uh, questions before i invite the first presenters please go ahead otherwise i just uh, invite the first uh, presenters i think miss miss ermanda or yeah ermanda mulki kanyar Please, uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Pak Hengki, and thank you for the opportunity for us to presenting our paper. Uh, my name is Armanda, and uh, my co-author and my research supervisor nomor 1 kan visi misi itu nanti suruh aja baca di VA-nya kasih link aja Pi. Yeah, I think uh, someone I think if I, <laughs> I know the voice. Okay, please turn off the okay. this. This time uh, we will present our paper about the impact political budget cycle on local government financial losses in Indonesia. <clears throat> Sorry. And the outline of our presentation consists of introduction, literature review, research method, result, and discussion. Uh, there are uh, two main background of our research. And the first is a direct election began in Indonesia in 2005. Indonesia uh, has adopted regional autonomy system with uh, fiscal decentralization that uh, give a regional head a higher authority to allocate the regional budget. So the regional heads who will return to participate in the local election or incumbent tend to use fiscal discretion to increase the allocation of certain budget expenditure or discretionary spending, such as donation, expenditure and social assistance expenditure to increase their popularity to be re-elected. According to Dresden and Eslava, uh, political budget cycle depends as uh, the difference in fiscal policy choice between before and after the election to adjust the people's preferences. Uh, since uh, the direct election in Indonesia, uh, Corruption Eradication Commission and Audit Board of Republic Indonesia uh, found many regional finance irregularity based on uh, annual report of KPK from 2004 until 2019. Uh, there were 500 corruption cases, <clears throat> and about half of this corruption uh, occurred in local government, which uh, about 119 cases involved a regional head as a corruptor. And uh, according to audit result of Audit Board of Republic Indonesia uh, from 2005 until 2019 on uh, the 
local government financial losses or uh, kerugian daerah uh, worth about three uh, trillion and uh, until now uh, half of them still not recover yet the election is in indonesia are often plagued with problem of corruption money politic for buying and selling votes political dowry the need for large campaign fund to win local election and the politicization of the government program for campaign such as troop donation and social assistance expenditure yes on sim according to siman junta voter tend to vote the candidate who can benefit them not only through direct cash benefit but also through donation and social assistance expenditure distributed via regional budget <clears throat> based on the literature by pbc can be done through several ways such as increasing spending budget deficit policy reducing taxes and changing the composition of spending to achieve voter preferences uh, in this study we focus more on the changing of composition spending because it is more feasible for the incumbent and the composition of expenditure was chosen as the instrument used by incumbent because uh, first fiscal policy through the composition of expenditure was more effective than reducing the taxes because uh, tax incentive were generally only used by uh, particular groups only and most of the tax authority is still managed by the central government by the ministry of finance such, uh, such as income taxes and value added tax and uh, the policy through increase of raw spending is difficult to achieve because sources of the financing for regional deficit is still limited it is not easy for the incumbent to increase the overall budget as we know uh, the average local revenue ratio is only about 10 percent whereas the dependence on the transfer from the central government is still very high Plus, the composition of the local expenditure is most likely the instrument used by the incumbent to win the election there are uh, several types of uh, local government expenditure in this study uh, discriminatory spending we focus only on four types expenditure consists of donation social assistance and services and capital expenditure other expenditure such as personal expenditure and financial aid expenditure or transfer are not classified as discretionary spending in this study because uh, personal expenditure is highly dependent on the number and grade of civil servant and uh, financial aid expenditure have been determined by specific formulation such as fund and political party assistance therefore regional head or incumbent can change allocation for spending on donation social assistance good and service and capital compared to other expenditure <coughs> On the right side, we can see uh, the graph of local expenditure pattern. Uh, on the horizontal line is on the period of election. T is the election year. T minus is in the period before election, and T plus is in the period after the election. As we can see in the graph, the occurrence, the occurrence of PBC is indicated by the pattern of the spending on donation in blue line and goods and services expenditure in green line that tend to increase from two years before the election to minus two until the election year on C. Based on a uh, Rokov model, uh, Rokov categorizes expenditure into two types. First one is feasible expenditure, is expenditure quickly realized and can directly utilize by the public. And uh, the less feasible expenditure is a long-term project and it is completion tend to be unpredictable and the public cannot directly utilize the benefit uh, as we can see from the graph uh, we categorize donation and good expenditure as a visible expenditure and uh, the capital expenditure categorized as a less visible expenditure incumbent tend to shift the allocation of less visible expenditure to more visible one during the election and the incumbent government is easier to use donation fund in influencing people decision to vote them the determination of the donation recipient is authority of the regional head therefore it is uh, necessary to research to test whether the pbc occur in indonesia <coughs> and uh, the dependent variable in this research we use local government financial losses or uh, kerugian daerah the financial losses is the irregularity in the regional finance management fund 
been audited by the Audit Board of Republic Indonesia or BPKRI. This uh, losses can be proxy or signal cost of corruption. As we can see in the graph, uh, the blue line is uh, the average ratio of losses compared to total expenditure for the incumbent and the red line is for non-incumbent. The pattern of the losses ratio tend to increase starting from two years before the election until the election year for incumbent and non-incumbent. Uh, and this research will uh, investigate with is correlated with political budget political budget cycle phenomenon in Indonesia as uh, explained earlier. <coughs> There are uh, two research questions in this question. In this research, first, uh, are there any changes in the composition and discipline spending in the election year or in the occurrence of PBC? And the second is, does discretionary spending in the election year have an impact on local government financial losses in Indonesia or in the occurrence of political corruption cycle? <coughs> This research contribution is uh, contributed to enriching the PBC literature by focusing on evaluating the impact of opportunistic behavior of regional head in dealing with local election on local financial regulatory in the form of local financial losses. <clears throat> to our knowledge, uh, this is in the first study linking the existence of PBC to local government financial losses in which to a degree measuring the cost of corruption. <clears throat> And uh, the conceptual framework is uh, PBC theory was developed by Nordhaus, Alessina, Rogov, and Dresden Eslava. The incumbent regional head uses the discretionary spending in the election year to increase the probability of being re-elected. Uh, according to economic of crime theory by Baker, uh, we categorize regional as is an illegal act. So the regional head uh, will calculate the expected benefit versus the expected cost. The expected benefit is uh, They commit the financial losses to fund campaign capital in the election year to increase the incumbent probability of being reelected. Then the cost is uh, the audit report. Maybe uh, affect the reputation of the incumbent. And then uh, the several previous empirical research, which on the result PBC has been carried out, but the relationship of, between PBC and the degree of financial The regulatory has not provided conclusive conclusion. Some research found that electoral accountability reaches the level of corruption, but the other side election can be positively related to the corruption. <coughs> And a uh, model specification we use in this research, on the stage one, we test the existence of BBC expenditure in the, as a dependent variable, which is the ratio of local expenditure compared to total expenditure and uh, elect as uh, independent variable is a dummy variable in the election year. We use election year, one year before and two year before. And uh, in the estimation 1B, we add the incumbent dummy variable uh, to see a uh, difference behavior between incumbent and non-incumbent. And for the control variable, we use a uh, local revenue, population, GRDP, poverty rate, and years of school. And uh, after we confirm the existence of BBC, We will see in the impact we see on the local government financial losses, and we use loss as a dependent variable, which is local government financial losses compared to total expenditure, and uh, independent variable is delta expenditure, which is changes in the expenditure ratio compared to the previous year. The, ratio, the control variable same with the previous estimation, and at the uh, BPKRI audit opinion. <coughs> And uh, this is the descriptive statistic. Uh, we use data from 2014 until 2019 with uh, all local government in district and city level exclude in Jakarta because uh, the major are appointed by the governor. And the election is 2015, 2017, and 2018. If we see the financial ratio pattern, we can see with the yellow highlight is the highest financial losses in the election year compared to the other period. Also, there is a difference financial losses between island, so we add the dummy island. <clears throat> And the result in the estimation one to confirm the existence of PBC um, in the column one until column four, 
we use uh, the estimation 1A and column 5 to 8, we use estimation 1B. We add the in the apa, in incumbent dummy variable. As we can see, uh, the occurrence SPBC is indicated by the increase in in the first row. We can see uh, the donation expenditure ratio is positive and significant. And uh, the goods and capital expenditure is negative and significant. It means that uh, visible spending increase and less visible spending decrease in the election year. This is confirmed with the previous research. And uh, in the row three until six, with the adding the <coughs> incumbent dummy, there is no significant parameter. So the incumbent does not affect PBC compared to an incumbent. <coughs> and next, we test uh, the effect of PBC to the local government financial losses. We can see in the first row, the variable elect is positive and significant, and the increase of variable, the magnitude of elect is increased. And uh, the changes in goods and metal expenditure also have positive effect on financial losses. And the interaction of elect and capital ratio also have positive and significant. So uh, the increase of the expenditure also increase the financial losses. And from the control variable audit opinion, a good internal control in the local government also negatively correlated with financial losses. And uh, using the estimation to be, we see uh, the difference financial losses characteristics between incumbent and non-incumbent. As we can see that uh, the increased financial losses in the election was mainly due to time trend and the increase in the changes goods and capital expenditure are so increasing financial losses. In the election year, an increase in goods expenditure has negative effect and increase in the capital expenditure have positive effect. So uh, the net effect of good and capital expenditure has negative value. So it means the increase of goods and capital expenditure with the participation of incumbent in the election has impact on the lower financial losses. And uh, we move to the discussion. We disaggregate the losing, the losses pattern in incumbent into losing incumbent and winning incumbent. Losing incumbent is incumbent loss uh, in election. The pattern of local financial losses in winning incumbent tend to be smoother than the losing incumbent. You can see that the average losses of winning incumbent is lower than losing incumbent. Incumbent who participate in the local election are more likely to reduce division to that impact financial losses because it can affect electability and profitability of winning the election. For incumbent who won the election tend to reduce financial losses ahead election year publication of regional finance irregularity may have an impact on incumbent reputation. And the conclusion of this research is first, we confirm the PBC phenomenon in the election year. Local head use their fiscal discretion to change the proportion of discretionary spending, especially increase in donation and decrease in goods and capital expenditure. There was no difference PBC behavior between incumbent and non-incumbent local government. And the sector is the existence of PBC have the impact on increasing local financial losses in the election year. This is confirmed confirm the existence of political corruption cycle and uh, the addition changes of proportion of good and capital expenditure in the election years impact decreasing the value of local financial losses when the incumbent participate in the election. So the incumbent who participate in the local election tend to reduce local financial irregularity behavior to increase the probability of being re-elected. Thank you for your attention. Please welcome for any question or input. Thank you. Uh, if I may, Pat. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pai Armanda. Very nice presentation. Um, if I may ask, uh, just out of curiosity, um, I think it's on your page, results one. Um, 
for social aids expenditures, um, the, the results seem to be not really statistically significant. How, what is your interpretation there? So it's mainly donation, but not social aids expenditures. What are your thoughts there? Okay, um, Pak Ermanda, you can uh, give a response now. <clears throat> uh, the result of the DG on portal. I think it's on results one page. Yeah. Yes, on the result one page, uh, it consists of uh, four type of expenditure and uh, in social expenditure is uh, not significant to affect the PBC. It means uh, the lo local head only uh, only focus on donation expenditure uh, to, to impact the voter. <coughs> Yeah. Well, what are the biggest uh, components of the donation spending? Pa? Just uh, as an example, I, I, I find it very interesting just because actually I'm presenting another paper tomorrow on the impact of fiscal windfalls on district government spending patterns. So from oil and gas windfall, fiscal windfalls and then how that relates to or affects the different government spending components, expenditure components. And as a matter of fact, we find social aid payment to be quite heavily affected. So that, that's why I'm just trying to, maybe I need to have a better understanding of the difference between donation uh, spendings and social aids programs or expenditures. Uh, hello, Ermanda. Yeah, Ermanda. Yeah. Uh, Ermanda I, I would like to confirm that donation is bantuan keuangan, right, Arman, Ermanda? Hibah. Yeah. Bantuan hibah donation. Social. Bantuan hibah, right? Uh, oh, hibah, and, yeah. 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 Uh, so it is uh, actually to the third uh, party, uh, usually the. Uh, so, like to the organization or social organizations. Uh, it will falls under uh, bantuan hibah, but in the case of uh, 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 social uh, social, I'm sorry, it, it is bansos, social right? Aid. Social aid is bansos, right? Uh, oh, bantuan sosial. Ermanda. Yeah, Ermanda. So it is more a programmatic program, and I don't know. This uh, this is only my guess, but Ermanda maybe knows better given. Uh, 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 he he also uh, I'm sorry you are in BPK or BPKP so uh, uh, I think uh, it's more programmatic in the case of social aids in comparison to uh, to the case of HIBA which is uh, 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 dedicated or can be allocated to uh, 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 organizations uh, like us. Uh, uh, on community organization that maybe in the election years is uh, a whole uh, quite uh, I don't know tokoh masyarakat and and yeah. so on that whole uh, uh, they can sway uh, voters uh, especially uh, at the rural area. This is on the influence voters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, thank thank you, Ibu. I think that's very helpful. I mean, before my presentation tomorrow, I will try to more carefully. Distinguish again also in our data, yeah. When we discuss, when we study fiscal windfalls effect on expenditure items, uh, to try and really understand the difference or study the difference again between hiba and bansos, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good point. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Pak. Okay, thank you, Pak Ridwan. I think that is a very nice discussion, uh, and welcome to. Riyadh, <laughs> even though uh, I think oh, Riyadh gave us some insight of the uh, discussions for the difference, I think, um, but still have uh, some discussion. I think 
but I prefer to uh, invite another uh, discussion or questions for other participants. If uh, still have some, please go ahead. Now, otherwise, I just uh, invite for the second um, presenters. It is a uh, this one, yeah. And uh, if we have a still sometimes after the last uh, presenters, we we still have a sometimes for another uh, further discussions. Please, uh, the time is yours, Pa Ritwan. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Ibu Ibu dan Bapak Bapak. Um, I will share my screen. Sorry, one second. Can you see the slides? Yes, yes. it's right. Okay, let me, do I need to make it bigger maybe? Let me see. Um, does this help? So it's good for everyone? Yes, yeah. better, it's nice. Okay, it's good. thank you very much, uh, Ibu dan Bapak, for the chance to speak today. Um, on behalf of my co-author, uh, Professor Chang Yung Ho from Singapore University of Social Sciences and myself from Cologne and Luxembourg, uh, we are thankful for this opportunity. This is actually a theoretical paper and we are hoping to stimulate interest and invite interest for uh, researchers uh, in Indonesia and elsewhere. To, to, to help us uh, uh, if they have any insights and data on the empirical side or more, yeah. Um, so, so it's regarding um, the fire and haze problem in Sumatra, Kalimantan and so on because of slashing and burning. And uh, um, so um, I'll give a bit of background literature, our objectives, and then basically there are two levels of bargaining. One is between uh, the central government with its neighboring countries like Singapore, for example, Malaysia. And then secondly, you know, we will discuss about the vertical, what I call vertical uh, negotiations between the central government or contest or bargaining between the central government and the local, you know, uh, district governments, uh, which I will elaborate on in a minute. And then, you know, of course, so it's a theoretical model, but we will derive some policy strategies, many of which, of course, have been implemented, although with varying results. Um, background, everybody's aware, you know, a lot of uh, uh, not only accidental, but many uh, man-made fire hotspots, uh, depending on the year, some years are worse, some years are better, um, you know, especially uh, uh, peatlands, you know, uh, forest burnings and so on is uh, uh, regularly a problem. Uh, the big issue is, of course, the direct and the indirect cost and losses, uh, cost and damages and losses. Direct costs are health uh, cost, firefighting cost, as well as damages to infrastructure equipment. Indirect losses are much more difficult to measure, are sometimes uh, uh, invisible, uh, and they include opportunity losses to industry, tourism, but the big chunk actually has been estimated to be environmental and biodiversity losses, which of course are politically more difficult to make apparent to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the citizens and, you know, many stakeholders. Um, the central government challenges, there are many people who benefit, families need it in some cases, especially in underdeveloped regions, um, when we talk about slashing and burning yeah, and, and providing the farmers' incomes. Uh, plantation companies, they make a lot more profits still uh, from slashing and burning versus legal uh, uh, mechanical land clearing, organic land clearing. Um, the companies, whether plantation, timber, they of course weigh the cost or profit advantage of slashing and burning versus uh, reputation and legal risk, clearly. Um, and from the central government perspective, the problem is land, uh, uh, really uh, uh, verifying land ownership, locations of hotspots, farmer types and effort, which uh, will elaborate, and 
dealing with so-called local collusion groups, which I will specify and elaborate on in a minute. Neighboring country citizens affected by transboundary haze. That's why, for example, Singapore government has been very focused on this issue. Uh, insufficient authority of central government over local politicians and decision makers, local autonomy, decentralization since 1999, um, and the local collusion group, which in particular Purnomo Shantiko from CIFOR in Bogor have, uh, have investigated most thoroughly. You know, they of course uh, uh, are the biggest issue for central government, and that is one of the main uh, topics of or you know targets of our uh, 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 theoretical model. Now, many of you you know are aware of this. When I give this presentation outside Indonesia, uh, um, they actually appreciate this more because they may not be as aware. Whereas many of us who are let's say from more familiar with Indonesia, you know, this is a bit more intuitive because whether we like it or not, we see it around us in various areas, not only in the context of slashing burning, you have central government and what Purnomo Shantiko call, you know, kind of a local collusion group, which is organized by local business elites using Purnomo Shantiko's uh, terminology, uh, local entrepreneurs, who see the benefit that plantation companies uh, can make more profit slashing and burning. Uh, of course, the large plantation and timber companies are much more careful now, especially if they are if they have activities financing subsidiaries in Singapore, for example. But for the local and medium-sized plantation companies, they see benefits. But of course, they are quite careful. And here come the local entrepreneurs who know how to kind of straddle and influence or work with and coordinate the plantation companies, um, the local bureaucrats working together in providing compensation and sometimes even, sorry to say, intimidating, maybe even farmers who may not wish to engage in slashing and burning and convincing the farmers to engage in this illegal, uh, in the illegal large scale slashing and burning type of land clearing. Um, you know, whereas the center government, we assume in our model, is benign, benevolent, although we can uh, discuss later how we relax this assumption uh, in case the central government also gets at least partially captured or myopic. Um, and they, you know, have to deal with the, have to try and convince the farmers to engage in the legal ways of land clearing. Okay, so our common agency model deals, uh, 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 defines the farmers as a common agent getting influenced by the local collusion group versus the central government. The central government wishes legal, non-burning, uh, mechanical or organic land clearing. This, the local collusion group wishes to convince the farmers and pay them, or maybe even, as mentioned, with positive or negative stick and carrot, carrot and stick, uh, influence them to do slashing and burning. Um, literature. A uh, lot of empirical work, some of it outdated, which I tried to update in my 2018 uh, 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 book chapter, you know, uh, on the central government neighbor kind of uh, bargaining game. Um, you know, lots of it from World Bank, Guyon Simorankir, some of the classics, and many, of course, researchers at ANU. Uh, Purnomo Shantiko is, in my view, one of the uh, best studies on this matter, right? You know, they did a lot of uh, surveys, network analysis, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, even to estimating which part of the local collusion group actually gets, you know, how many dollars per hectare estimated benefits and so on and so forth, which drives their respective incentives. Um, studies at ANU about the, uh, uh, the, the, the determinants of forest fires. For example, uh, Edwards in 2022, um, they, they find out that you know, local economic growth, underdevelopment, and remote areas are more prone to slashing and burning. 
Uh, Edwards et al, another paper, you know, I just added some of the Indonesian researchers in that uh, team of authors. They particularly did a random controlled trials and uh, analysis of giving payments to farmers to, to incentivize them to not engage in slashing and burning. The results are not yet as favorable, but it is definitely a very interesting approach to starting to talking about incentive payments to farmers. Uh, what Stacconi did the same, they studied the e effect of incentive payments and information campaigns on farmers. And in particular, they find out that land ownership is a big issue. And then Takoni, of course, who has written a lot about these uh, fires and, and, uh, and haze problems and so on and so forth in Indonesia, um, you know, again, they uh, find out that, or they, uh, among others, that underdeveloped regions, again, are much more prone. So all these payments give us motivation that our common agency model might have some merit in the sense that there is a contest in trying to influence or convince farmers whether or not to slash, whether to slash it or so that they would rather not engage in slashing and burning and would rather, you know, choose the legal means of work in terms of land clearing, or maybe even, and this is one of our findings, which is also supported by some of the empirical work mentioned earlier, that to give them through education and industrialization, uh, other outside other employment options, which give them better income. And then there have been papers on ASEAN transboundary haze, the political economy, you know, uh, uh, the problem of uh, central government not being able to control the local government because of the local autonomy, decentralization, uh, and so on. And um, a theoretical paper, uh, theoretical paper, uh, our second theoretical model, which we won't present today, is based on the multitask common agency models of Hosom Milgron and Dixit. So contribution, uh, in my 2018 paper, I derived a game of chicken, which I'll just summarize quickly after this, um, between central government and neighbor. And in the common agent model, as mentioned, today we're just going to focus on the competing principles model. Um, and we hope our model setup that combines the horizontal transboundary bargaining between the central government and any neighbor or multilateral agency can be combined with the vertical bargaining between the central government and the local governments. Uh, or for example, in the European Union, the European Union as a supranational kind of like uh, uh, organization, I, I mean, institution negotiates with the US with other uh, uh, you know, countries with ASEAN and so on, but at the same time has to deal with the member countries. Same thing with ASEAN. ASEAN on a supranational level negotiates internationally, but still has to deal with the verding, divergent interest uh, 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 of the member countries. So it's a two by, uh, so between the center and the neighbor, it's a two by two game, right? Either they invest in enforcement abatement, preventive or not. B is always benefit, okay? It's kind of welfare, which includes tax income, profits, farmers' income, and so on in aggregate from the perspective of the government, okay? Um, the superscript is either C, central government, L, local collusion group, or N, which is the neighboring country. The subscript is either B burning or zero, zero burning. H is kind of hazard, cost, total cost, to the center government, to the neighbor. And C is cost of preventive enforcement, abatement, and so on, uh, which may include, in some cases, profit reimbursement to the companies and especially farmer compensation, okay? So uh, the idea is this, if neither of them invest, then slashing and burning happens. So there is the total benefit of burning, but from the central government perspective, there's a huge cost, direct and indirect cost. The neighbor suffers from the haze 
and uh, suffers hazard H of N. If any of them invest, either the Indonesian government by itself or the neighbor by itself or both jointly, then in the first best case, uh, uh, complete information and so on, no capture and so on, uh, there is zero burning. Minus the abatement cost, the difference being who pays the abatement cost. If Indonesia, the central government uh, invests, then the central government pays minus C. If the neighbor invests, then the neighbor pays minus C. If they both invest, they split the cost. And so based on this setup, we basically, uh, uh, we have to now order or estimate the numbers to see which one is bigger than which. And here we take advantage of uh, a lot of the empirical work done over the years. For example, World Bank two years, uh, a few years ago, uh, $16 billion total direct and indirect costs from the central government's perspective um, versus the direct local cost of about 2 billion. So HC is much bigger than HL. For Nomo Shantiko, they, uh, I aggregated some of their numbers based on the hectares burned in some years and their estimates of the benefits to the, to the members of the local collusion group. We estimate four to eight billion kind of uh, uh, benefits of slash and burn. Um, now, uh, uh, what matters is for the plantation companies, the difference between burning and zero burning. They gain more profit. The increased profits uh, makes them pay more taxes to the central government, as we know, corporate income taxes, which through DAU and, and, and DAK and so on and so forth, the allocation funds comes back to the local populace, to the local district government, which is a big chunk part of the balancing funds. And so uh, uh, there's an estimate, which by now is higher, of the incremental total welfare benefit from burning minus zero burning, just because of the big profit increase through slash and burn is about $1.72 billion order of magnitude. Now we assume for now that B, whether burning or non-burning from the perspective of central versus local government is the same. So we drop the superscripts, which uh, we call comparable benefits because the central government sees the welfare of the local government as well, because it's part of the country, right? And so we will relax this assumption later. Now, there, there are estimates of H of N, which is the hazard to the neighbor, which is bigger than 2 billion. Um, and then there's a cost of abatement, which uh, when it comes to direct costs is less than the billion. And then there's farmer's compensation. So with this, we can estimate that the H of C is much bigger than H of N, which in turn is bigger than C. So if we apply all this, we get a game of chicken, okay? So if with three Nash equilibria, if the Indonesian government doesn't invest, the neighbor is forced to invest. If the Indonesian government invests, the neighbor will free ride, or there's a mixed solution, mixed equilibrium, they both invest. Okay, and the payoffs are actually similar uh, under first best conditions of complete info, no capture and so on. Assuming, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, the difference being only who pays the abatement cost. Okay, so now from a, when we talk about the local collusion group, B of B is uh, um, uh, minus H of L, which where the direct cost uh, for the local is much lower. So from the local collusion group perspective, they always want to slash and burn. Because for them, B, B0 is always much smaller than BB. And uh, uh, they have to pay the abatement cost. So the local collusion group cares mainly about local direct costs, which are lower. So the center now in this common agency game must compensate the farmers and outbid the local group. Naturally, both face budget constraints, which I have in the appendix. Uh, but the main thing is the farmers maximize their income 
which is the compensation they get from the center to not slash and burn minus the effort of mechanical land clearing. Uh, and they compare it with the compensation they get from the local collusion group to burn. And basically what we get is can be, uh, 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 can be depicted in this picture easily. The budget constraint of the central government uh, uh, decreases with the incremental benefit from burning. Naturally, the local collusion group, the red line, I make it red because it's undesirable, increases with the incremental benefit from burning. And so we can, and here, this is compensation that can be paid maximum by central government and by local collusion group. And you can see that at low, which is intuitive, incremental benefits from burning, the central government wins the contest, they can pay more. And when the benefits from burning is high enough, then obviously the local collusion group wins. Now, one important point to mention here is there's an indifference point, a level of incremental benefits from burning, which equalizes the two. And this is the key point here, phi, the indifference point. At any incremental benefits from burning lower than phi, central government wins, there's no slashing and burning. If it's higher, the local collusion group wins, there is burning. And so, for example, when we see some of the empirical results from adverse and so on that have not yet been successful enough in stopping or avoiding slashing and burning, there could be the situation where they are in this regime where the local collusion group just pays more. So, um, uh, to, to, so, so this, as long as the incremental benefit from burning is lower than phi, Sorry, Marit, one, you still have yeah. five minutes. Yeah? Yes, yes, I, uh, I can. I can get done actually in five. Minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah. Um, then the lo the central government wins. The higher the cost, the lower the abatement cost, and uh, uh, the higher the effort of burning minus the effort of zero burning. This is usually negative because mechanical land clearing actually. Uh, exerts or requires higher efforts from farmers and so on, mechanical work, right? Then basically central government can win as long as the incremental benefits are lower than the indifference point. Now this phi decreases when center is captured or myopic or the local group demands profit reimbursement. Phi increases when slashing and burning is penalized explicitly or the center reduces fiscal transfers, which can reduce the perceived delta B uh, benefit for the local. So all policy strategies aim to increase five, okay? Or reduce the delta B. Um, very quickly, if there's in that successful industrialization and education so that the outside employment options are higher than the, than the original, crossing point here, then actually uh, slashing and burning is reduced. Why? Because the local collusion group can only win beyond a new phi of L, which is higher than the original phi. Why? Because here the central government convinces the farmers to engage in legal work, land clearing. And here, the outside employment option i.e. other types of work not related to land clearing dominates you know, any payment the local collusion group can provide. Okay, which again means the less developed an area, the lower the outside options, the worse it gets. Okay, and so when we combine it, if the central government wins the neighbor free rights, however, if the central government loses, then the neighbor must help. They have to jointly invest. Yeah, and, and therefore there's a Phi cooperative where the budget constraints of the center and the neighbor are combined. That's why the central government really needs help from neighboring countries, from MLAs and uh, multilaterals and so on and so forth. And of course, there's a problem if the center is captured or only sees part of the uh, 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 cost, then the effective phi's 
decrease. Whereas what we wish is that the effective uh, phi actually increases. And so there are, plenty, there are a number of policy strategies. Center has to be fully informed, kept honest. Uh, uh, the neighbors and MLAs have to help. Education industrialization is imperative. Punishment is key. Singapore government can, for example, punish a lot of the companies that have activities in Singapore as well. Information and health campaigns, totally imperative. Technology and innovation, very important to reduce the effort of mechanical land clearing to reduce abatement cost. Uh, um, and the central government actually has a means to control the district governments with the DAU and DAK payments. So in, in that sense, I'm actually done. I have one other page on limitations. Basically, obviously I need to expand, we need to expand uh, this model to include more explicit asymmetric information, which we are actually, which we have done, which I'm not presenting right now because of time constraints, but uh, um, uh, in, even more importantly, any interest to <laughs> uh, work with us on the empirical side, to test the predictions and so on would be totally welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, by Ritwan. Very um, interesting paper and result. And uh, thank you for understanding the time limitation. <laughs> but Absolutely. I I have a trivial question mm -hmm. because I'm not a game theory specialist. Uh, two things: um, whether your game is um, uh, classified as a one-shot game or uh, repeated game. First is really <laughs> trivial uh, questions. And if the second, so is there any uh, scenarios one players can uh, apply Triker strategy? Thank you. I invite you to a really short uh, yes. answer of my yeah, question. Thank you, but yeah, so our, our basic model is a one stage, one shot game. Yeah, okay. we are actually expanding it to include repeat game because in this game of chicken, uh, uh, um, the, the three solutions, right? The, uh, it, it, is, it is more difficult to, do, to, to get a simple backward induction kind of result, right? It really depends on, you know, uh, what the expectations are and what kind of reputation, yeah, uh, one, you know, party uh, 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 credibly signals, right? Uh, the problem for the central government is that the neighbor, uh, you know, will always try to free ride because as soon as the neighbor knows that the central government is dealing or is contesting or negotiating or with the local collusion against the local collusion group, trying to convince the farmers and so on. Basically, the neighbor knows uh, the center government uh, will not be able to share completely. And so the neighbor uh, will always try to, <coughs> sorry, will always try to uh, 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 free ride, you know, unless they see the center government is really facing a severe budget constraint. So in that sense, ultimately, the game uh, uh, that we will derive for the repeat game will generally lead towards the cooperative uh, solution <coughs> if we assume the limited budget constraint of the central government is you know is prevalent yeah <coughs> sorry okay uh, thank you very much for uh, clarifications and uh, answer of the questions um, two papers has been presented. Uh, uh, two papers about the public finance, about the how uh, the government mm -hmm. deal with some what we got the political things. Um, but for the next presentation is about the another things about the transportation economics. It's a, it's a bit uh, safe the topics, but I think uh, still really important for Indonesians uh, policy, especially deal with the borders of the nations and also uh, the remote uh, area of the Eastern part of Indonesia. Okay, now I'm invite uh, Mr. I think uh, Kairul Amin. 
Pak Khairul Amin ya yes, to yeah. present the uh, papers title elements of maritime logistic transaction cost in islands province of North uh, Maluku eastern part of Indonesia time is yours please thank you Pak Hengki uh, dear audience all participants of IRSA international conference uh, in this opportunity I'd like to, I'd like to present our paper about the the increment of the of transaction logistic, maritime logistic transaction cost in island province of North Maluku is from Indonesia. Uh, I'm Hyrule Amin, the representative of, of outdoor. Uh, this is actually this, this is my part of my dissertation and uh, the other outdoor is my my motto. Uh, let's start to this presentation. Uh, as introduction, it, my paper, it, our paper is uh, we began to the special economic disparity in Indonesia. Uh, it uh, the it creates the what's the distribution the, the concentration of the trade distribution it's much much more located in west in indonesia so it it goes that the ship to the in indonesia much more uh, shipping in west of indonesia than comparing in east of indonesia this condition affected the logistic cost to the east of indonesia is much exp more expensive than in west part of indonesia so this the this the problem how to uh, this condition that uh, this 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 the problem to to see but how the situation in eastern part of indonesia uh, there are the logistic cost of transportation it's very expensive so it is uh, it's important to to know and then uh, to to research uh, this uh, this paper and the condition of maritime logistic in North Maluku, especially in uh, there are still many of problem. You can see that uh, high sea transportation costs, uh, inefficiency tariff governance, the connectivity in land is still poor. There is still illegal fee. Uh, the, the schedules of ship is irregular, limited transportation mode and infrastructure of port facilities minimal and available for information system. Uh, so the problem in this research is what element influencing the maritime logistic transaction cost in island province of North Maluku and to propose to assess the element that influence maritime logistic transaction cost in island province of North Maluku. Uh, in best, the basic concept of the maritime logistic, we, according to the song and Panasite, that maritime logistic is consists of two activities. The first is sea transport activities and uh, including the contract shipping, sea voyage, moving cargo, loading, unloading. And the other activities is uh, logistic supplies, is street, including storage, warehousing, testing, assembly, and et cetera. And the maritime transport only including one activities. It's, it is uh, sea transport activities. And the main item or the main uh, issue in this research is the transaction cost economic in maritime logistics system. Uh, we see that from the picture here, uh, the goods or, or the commodity is beginning from the shipper and ending to the consign, final consignment. And in maritime logistics systems, uh, many activities, if you can see that, that from one state to the another state is create a cost, for example, in from shipper to the intermediate storing in the uh, early seaport, they are land crack costs. And then after that, if the goods of the community uh, arrive in the at, the at the port, there are many of the charts, uh, terminal handling charts, uh, such as warehouse charts, container shipping for worker to of trading. And after that, the commodities or goods is uh, loading to the ship 
and they are uh, uh, still a cost and uh, and then to the the ship going to the port destination and there are ship break costs and after that uh, if in arrive to the destination port they are still also charged at the destination port and after that uh, the commodities or goods uh, unload to the truck and going to the final consignor and there are still land price costs so the system of maritime logistics uh, we can uh, see that many of the transaction costs is occurring uh, from the beginning of the shipper until the, the end of the consignment. This is the motivation of the research in uh, how to, to see that the transaction cost variable uh, according to the code that defining that there are two components of transaction cost. Uh, first is asset specificity and, and the second is incremental uncertainty. As a specificity in maritime transact in maritime logistic, uh, uh, including as port infrastructure, port services, and port accessibility, and environmental certainty is maritime certainty, institutional certainty. According to the Halicas, maritime certainty is condition yang that cause ships cost to appear in trade by sea due to market certainty, and institutional certainty in maritime is a condition of certainty in terms of institutional regulation, institutional professionals, and actual habit or behavior that can cause transaction costs in operational sense. So we, in this study, we use the MICMAC uh, prospective analysis method to determine which indicator that uh, have the linkage or influence to another uh, variable, uh, including in asset specificity and uh, and as uh, there are uh, some there are some uh, there are some there are variable in asset specificity for infrastructure for surface and possibility and also in as uh, maritime uncertainty in this reset we uh, we click the three variable there are there, there are cargo uncertainty economy scale of islands and weather while in institutional uncertainty is regulation, organization, and behavior. Actually, this method is uh, full is qualitative method, and uh, we use a descriptive analysis to describe the what what uh, what context what what the fact uh, occurring in the in the what in the file uh, or in the in the condition in the real condition, and we find that. From the we we from the after we we done the FGD with some stakeholder in local uh, port in North Maluku, uh, we find that there are six uh, variable that has the, that have the in, the high influence uh, such as weather regulation, economic scale, behavior, infrastructure, and cargo uncertainty, and. There are three variables or three elements that have the high dependence. There are uh, services, volume, throughput, and maritime logistic cost. So, and the MICMAC prospect analysis also uh, produce the direct influence per gap, but we can see from the picture that uh, from the some variables, maritime logistic cost and cargo assistance is and polymetropod and also suffices whether behavior has the have the high or have the weak weakest uh, influence weak, weak influence to another to other variables and regulation organization have the uh, have uh, I'm sorry maritime cost polytrop weather and suffices cargo assistance have the strong influence on another variable uh, while the regulation organization uh, we had the weak influence on another variable and also the micmac prospect analysis also uh, produce indirect influence grab we can see from the picture that uh, the volume throughput uh, have has the influence, indirect influence to, to economic scale and uh, and then Economic scale has the indirect influence to maritime logistic cost. Uh, this is the fine point of fact. I think it's important to know uh, the condition of 
the maritime logistic cost or uh, the maritime logistic transaction cost in islands area in North Maluku, uh, whether is if 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 we bad if whether is bad, the activity of loading and loading can be disrupted and run slowly. So the time for bed of the ship become longer. If the time for bed of the ship become longer, so uh, it will be increase the cost to the ship will be higher. Uh, bad weather also uh, affected to the supply side of goods. Uh, where are where the supply side of goods to the island will be hampered and if this uh, if the goods to this island is hampered the price will rise in the islands for instance the piece and peg table price are more sustainable if the weather is terrible infrastructure variable uh, the, the infrastructure is one of the element very uh, important in to 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 reduce the the to the to reduce the high logistic maritime cost the cost of renting, loading, and unloading equipment, such as crane, truck, as well as a piece, cause high economic transaction occurring at the airport. The level of good facility is not guaranteed whether it's the logistic costs are low. In fact, the better the port facilities for loading and unloading activities, the higher the logistic cost that must be paid. And also, infrastructure. Uh, so that container and crane facilities include specific assets associated with the high cost in loading and loading surplus transaction. This is also interesting in behavior. We find that opportunism behavior occur in port that lack facility in the form of principal. It, it is causing the additional cost to arise, expensive and unreasonable unloading rates. Opportunism behavior also occurs when the ship owner or tour rider wishes to care of a selling permit or unloading permit where the accumulation cost charge are higher. For example, we find in the uh, Bachan, Bachan port in the west of Halmahera, the administrative fee of the uh, must to, to pay is 350,000 rupiah and ship pass is 1 million rupiah. Uh, but however, the, the, the fact is, this is the, the one of the sample of the illegal fee or the one of the sample of the transaction in cost. And another case we find also in Morotai port that there are a port officer collect a fee at the 600 rupiah per ton of goods to be unloaded. This is a this is fact that uh, can this we can describe that uh, there are still any activities of behavior of tourism in, in this case opportunism in the uh, doing by local local uh, local operator or local governance or local official in local port in islands port or in territorial port. So we think that this is a we will we this is the one of the element of the uh, to the why why the high logistic maritime transportation or maritime logistic is high in the uh, territorial area or islands province in eastern part of Indonesia. Another Sorry, variable, but, uh, still have a five minutes left. Okay. Another variable is cargo assistance. It is important too, but the cargo assistance will reduce the the cost uh, will will impact the cost of sea transportation expensive because the ship return will empty of load. The cost of transportation charge at the time of the depot. For example, uh, the cost of transportation from Tanjung Priok to the Ternate is uh, higher than return. Uh, is still uh, uh, three uh, uh, 30, 30, 30 million rupiah per container per container and if returning on is only six million rupiah. Uh, in economic scale of islands, the island scale of coming relatively limited and small, so the island's ability to control its market is very weak. The economic life of the island's community has a high dependence on its continental area. And regulation. The amount of the P is set is very detrimental to the owner of goods because it's not in accordance with the standard, with the cost standard regulated in the regulation. For example, if, uh, I said before, 
that there are uh, the illegal fee of three three hundred and fifty thousand per hour. In fact, in PP number fifteen two thousand and sixteen, the cost of renting is only uh, sixty sixty eight thousand per hour. So the this is the condition, the real condition of the maritime logistic cost in North Maluku. We can see that sea transportation cost is very high, girl, is very expensive. It is uh, about the 57% uh, uh, comparing in another, uh, another logistic cost. Loading and loading cost is only uh, appearance in 30.78%. And truck cost is only 30 percent. Uh, the conclusion is high quality logistic transit costs are strongly influenced by port infrastructure, cargo accessibility, weather, behavior, island economy of scale, and regulation. And so we 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 suggest that policy implication that we need to develop a digital information system between island port integrated with local industry center as a means of communication information for port stock hard stakeholder containing information volume capacity of goods unloaded, and so the transaction cost of maritime logistics will be reduced. And the second is establish an AI island logistics task force to anticipate crimes games by local entrepreneur or distributor to the main islands of island, especially for the island served by sea toll boat supplies. This logistics task force is important to investigate the price of goods in the market or soft that use the service of sea toll ship to the monitor the behavior of friend seeker at the port. Thank you, Pak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Khairullah Amin. Has been uh, present uh, the works about the elements of the maritime logistics transactions course. It's very interesting and uh, very relevant for uh, our case. So now I still have uh, some times i think uh, about 17 minutes for discuss so uh, if you have any questions or response uh, you participants also speakers can uh, raise your uh, questions as well so uh, please uh, go ahead so the questions can be addressed for all the uh, presenters Okay, no questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, if though I still have uh, some questions, especially uh, for uh, Kairula Amin, pa Kairula Amin. Um, I have uh, some some similarity. I mean, a similar studies um, about the logistic in uh, border area in the Natuna and Anambas and so on. So. The real problem is about uh, two things. Uh, the first is the weather, because because when when the uh, heavy weights happen, it's like uh, in the month of September until February or March, it's quite difficult for the quite small to medium ship uh, goes to the islands. So only the big ones. It's like the Pelni, uh, the big ship can uh, can go uh, to the islands. The second thing is about the uh, ownership of the ship itself. So in some uh, area, the owner of the uh, ship is local traders. So there is um, what we call it uh, the power, the market power to uh what we call it to make the cost of the transportations and also in fact ultimately cost of the uh, goods and services uh goes to the local um what we call it um we they call it uh toke i mean uh the traders the big traders you know uh do you think that you found the same uh the same things compared to the anambas or um, Natuna Islands in um, uh, North Maluku. Okay. Yes, of course, I agree with your, your research, Pahenki, that 
uh, in our in our uh, region in North Maluku, uh, in particularly North Maluku, is consist of the small islands, many of small islands here, uh, especially Ternate and Tidore. There are two islands. It has many uh, risk if the weather is very bad or terrible. Uh, I, I give the example. Uh, the piece of vegetable much more uh, uh, transported by the outside of the island, especially in Bitung or in Java. Uh, as you can say, but uh, as you can say before that the 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 size of the ship is small and medium small of ship. This uh, actually this also happened in this area, and uh, if the weather is if the weather is better uh, bad and the ship cannot transport the goods or logistic needs for, for to the highlands community. So uh, there are two, maybe there are if, uh, some, uh, until one week if the uh, uh, bad weather if the bad weather is terrible or going going, so the price will be will be rise uh, and then uh, there's there's the dynamic uh, dynamic of price uh, in the. Uh, what's in the local in the local economic of especially in Portugal in islands area. Uh, so uh, many uh, this uh, we, we can we can we can uh, what we can we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, what uh, uh, from the from the weather because this is the uh, this the fact and we cannot uh, this the fact and very difficult to how to how to what or how to manage this situation this problem because uh, uh, the if if we if we see from the other ship or the if you say if you say that the biggest ship is, uh, only only transport to uh, container or the bigger container uh, among islands or among port uh, in islands of North Maluku uh, many of the container ship uh, is from come from the Tanjung Priok, as we know the Tanjung. At, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, Tanjung Perak. As we know, Tanjung Perak is the port port of logistics and distribution to the uh, east of Indonesian uh, logistic need. So, uh, uh, in this situation, in this situation, we we get, we can say that uh, for the islands uh, region, for the territorial islands, or for the small region, for the small islands region, the weather and the uh, we found that the weather and the cargo ascendancy and also small, uh, or small economic of scale, it is very influences the the economic of the uh, local uh, local economic because uh, we we we, we call, because the small islands has have the characteristic uh, that different with the territory land uh, like Java or Sumatra. Uh, there are there are many of the source of uh, economic and islands small and in small islands have the limited on resources of economic inland. So uh, many of the log logistic needs uh, must to trans must transport it from the outside, and so it is the high risk risk in the logistic cost. And the another statement with the the owners of the ship that you say with that. Uh, Yes, I agree that uh, uh, with for, for the case in the case of North Maluku, the owner of the ship is uh, many of the the owner is uh, come from the, not uh, the the original of local 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 what local local community or local residences. Many of uh, uh, for example the fishing fish for the ship for peace, in North Maluku is many of the, many of the owners is uh, come from the uh, what's the north of Sulawesi uh, and and the other the other ethnic and the local uh, go, the local uh, populate the local com, com, the local residences in islands is still uh, still have the small uh, what's small ship for for the uh, uh, what for the for the rent of the shipping? Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for insight story about the uh, Mal North Malukus. 
really regarding to the uh, logistic stock logistic logistic cost okay anyone Yeah, I think uh, because we have a uh, three different uh, stream of the paper, so quite difficult maybe to give uh, some response for <laughs> it. But I can um, maybe I have uh, another questions for Pa Ridwan. So this is about the quite uh, what we call it conclusions or the prospect of the uh, carbon trading. So do you think? I don't know. I don't know exactly. This is a really a frank, uh, frankly, questions about the carbon trading. So, do you think that the your results can help or assist the um, the idea of the governments to treat the carbons with the uh, other countries like U.S. or maybe Singapore and so on, uh, uh, with the existence of the fire and haze? still access um, I I think but the carbon trading mechanism and any kind of negotiation between you know different governments uh, can be can be affected but at the same time you know can be somewhat separated also from you know this uh, fire and haze problem naturally when any government negotiates let's say with indonesia and says hey you know you got to get your local problems under control then basically you know uh, i mean they will say that um, but i don't think they anyone can afford to say we're not going to deal with you until you solve it completely Right. So in that sense, the main thing is that the central government can credibly signal that they're doing everything they can and they continue trying to make progress on this front. Yeah. On the, in terms of uh, managing, you know, and especially as we see, um, you know, this center local issue. Um, that's how I would. Uh, uh, characterize it or uh, look at it. So, so it'll be part of the discussions, but it's not going to be the, 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 the main stumbling block, which will render the car any kind of uh, carbon trading you know, uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, that, that will stop it completely. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. I think we still have uh, six minutes for the last question, I think. If anyone still have uh, questions, please go ahead. Otherwise, I will give uh, questions for Pa Ermanda about the political uh, budget cycles. Pa Ermanda, you still on? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So, um, the research is really interesting to uh, understanding about the behaviors during the election year. And then you look at the, uh, the budget on the election years. So whether the budget is, uh, tends to be shifted to uh, donations and good expenditure rather than or in cost of the decreasing in capital expenditure. My question is, um, if the election years uh, conducted in, in the, um, what we call it, something like the, uh, the beginning of the year, so how you um, make adjustments about the times compared to the, the ends if the election year uh, conducted in the end of the year. Do you have any adjustments, um, measurements? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question, Pak Hengki. Uh, following uh, the 
previous research uh, uh, for the dummy election is uh, for the if the election did election that held between January until June uh, I use the dummy of election year in the uh, one year before the election so for example for uh, 20 for 2017 uh, when uh, the election held in February uh, I use the dummy value one in uh, 2016 uh, and for the after June after June until December uh, I use the dummy variable value one in the election year <clears throat> okay you make adjustments uh, using the dummy variables yes yeah maybe I, I would like to add given that the budget uh, is actually uh, uh, so this is actually related uh, to the budget. Uh, so when the election is actually start at the uh, beginning of the year, uh, that's mean only the budget T minus one that can uh, affect it. So uh, we, uh, uh, Amanda actually would, uh, would treat that uh, election year in 2017 XST in the 2016. So when uh, 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 some region is actually uh, held the election uh, after the June, then the budget year, the current budget, win, uh, uh, budget year that uh, actually uh, affected, uh, I mean, uh, they can actually have discretion under the current budget year, not previous budget year. So uh, uh, Armando would uh, would uh, define it, uh, define uh, uh, the election year as 2017. So that's I think the case. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I think that is the last uh, questions for me. Uh, maybe still have uh, some uh, questions, please. Still have uh, one two minutes. Uh, I am. Thank you. I'm, I, yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'd, I I would like to to have a question to Pa Ridwan. Uh, it is interesting, Pa Ridwan, with your conclusion and your suggestion, the final suggestion, the the last that the what's the best of the uh, what's the best of policy of the uh, to how to reduce the the bird and the, this 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 problem in in your on your research, do you think that your game theory and of your result is will be uh, will have uh, will will give the uh, the alternative solution to the government? Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pak Um I, I would say a lot of the policy strategies that we can derive from our model uh, are already being implemented. They are not entirely new, but uh, uh, the empirical results so far have shown that uh, many of the attempts or programs introduced by the central government, local governments, NGOs, and so on, uh, with the help of MLAs uh, uh, and so on, haven't been entirely successful. Um, so the, 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 the bigger problem, oh, for example, yes, some of the ANU researchers have, find out, have found out that, um, you know, uh, uh, or are now starting to focus on incentive payments, but they haven't seen really positive results yet our model maybe shows that maybe just paying the uh, compensating the farmers is necessary but not sufficient unless you can really beat or outbid the local collusion group right you know uh, 
surely there have been information campaigns, health, uh, educational programs, and so on and so forth. You know, they have to continue to be, you know, uh, uh, enhanced, expanded. Uh, education industrialization seems obvious, but again, the question is the degree to which it is really necessary to give the farmers uh, alternative employment options so that they don't have to refer back to accepting whatever compensation they might receive from the, in our context, the local collusion group to engage in slashing and burning. Technology, you know, innovation is required to reduce the transaction cost, right? Uh, uh, to, you know, of enforcement, monitoring, prevention, to uh, uh, reduce the effort cost of mechanical land clearing, right? That is uh, some, those are some of the questions we've been getting from some audio, uh, seminar participants in Japan, for example, because as you, know, as you all know, generally speaking, Japan, the Japanese government provides a lot of assistance to Indonesian government. And they feel when it comes to some of these uh, particular slashing and burning problems, um, it is just still, the profit advantage of slashing and burning is just still too high, partially related to the fact or driven by the fact that the effort or the cost of legal mechanical or organic land clearing is still um, uh, 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 too high. So the effort of not slashing and burning is still high, right? And at the same time, surveillance technologies and so on to make sure that the demarcation of the lands and then land property ownership uh, uh, is also something that needs to be tackled, right, in parallel. So there's no one simple solution. It's really a portfolio of it. And the question is the degree to which each is implemented to such a point that we reach a tipping point, so to speak, or a critical mass where all these efforts starts, start mutually enhancing each other, complementing each other, and then kind of uh, uh, becoming more successful in containing this, the extent of slashing and burning. And that's why we, we think, so the model helps us zoom in on the various policy uh, strategies. Uh, uh, and at the same time, we do need complementary, more empirical studies to try and really quantify the necessary or to identify the tipping points at yeah, the aggregate tipping point where the collective of all these measures might then really bring us to, you know, uh, uh, bring the success we need. Okay, thank you, uh, Pak Ritwan, for uh, giving us more insights about the um, recommendation, policy recommendation can be uh, developed from your research. So I think uh, the time is really extended for minutes. Uh, really sorry about that because we have a uh, nice discussions. So uh, now I um, would not to dis um, give a summary of the discussions. So because it's, time is up. Just say thank you for your participations and presenting and good luck for your presenters to develop more uh, research uh, papers better. Hopefully you can enjoy and uh, these discussions can uh, benefit for your uh, improvement of your papers and research. So thank you very much um, for joining and uh, see you for the next uh, session. I think it will be uh, in 10 minutes. So thank you and bye-bye.